So with the recent gameplay video that just got released by Nintendo, I'm sure everyone and their mother is excited for Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, who isn't? But the question still remains, will Tears of the Kingdom be a worthy sequel to Breath of the Wild? Well, as you may recall from the gameplay video, Tears has finished development, and as such, through some sneaky connections I will not be naming <laughs> at Nintendo, I was able to get my hand in a copy and play through the entirety of Tears. Obviously, not sharing gameplay footage, they would literally airstrike me, but I thought it was my duty as someone who's played through the game to share my thoughts to, you know, quell the anxiety of fans who are waiting a sequel to honestly one of the best games ever. So, to answer the question of will Tears of the Kingdom be a worthy sequel, yes! It's a resounding yes, the game's amazing. As to if Tears is better than Breath of the Wild, also yes, it's... Uh, let me, just let me get into it. Obviously, I haven't had time to 100% the game or explore every side quest in it, the main story and the handful of side quests I've experienced um, show me a sequel that is not only better than the original, but worth the wait, believe it or not. Obviously, things like replay value and the complete depth of content I can't 100% be accurate on, but you know, after the time I've spent playing the game, I can confidently say I've loved it, and I'm sure all the fans will too. So I know you guys are anxious, so let's stop beating around the bush and let's just get straight into it. Tears of the Kingdom, an overview! stupid. I'll try not to spoil the story beats or side quest endings, but I will be talking about some spoilery stuff, as well as the themes present in the game. So uh, just a quick heads up, obviously I'm gonna have spoiler warnings and shit like that, uh, don't worry. But, you know, just felt like it was a good thing to do to say it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to my experience with Tears of the Kingdom. Let's start with the obvious stuff. The sky Islands, the Constructs, and the new abilities. We've already gotten a glimpse of the Construct Grunts, through the Sky Islands, and the Fuse, Ultra Hand, Ascend, and Recall abilities. There are a few other new abilities. They're kind of just dog shit, to be honest, though. Not bad in any means, which is not important. Like, Descend. You can probably piece that together. It's the opposite of Ascend. You can go down. Ooh! Obviously, it's slightly more finicky than Ascend. I mean, it's much easier to break the game going down shit. So, uh, it's only available in some areas, like roofs of buildings, roofs of cave systems, and sky islands. Uh, that's a good little symbol that comes up to notify you when you can use it. It's whatever. I don't want to talk about that boring shit, though, because... Ultra Hand and Fuse are the highlights of the game, without a doubt. Ultra Hand leads to some of the most ridiculous modes of the game. Like, <laughs> I, I'm speechless, to be honest. There's no words to describe what the experience of using Ultra Hand in the game like Breath of the Wild is. Like, I can say I rode into a boss fight in a fully decked out monster truck, but that doesn't really get the experience across. It's just amazing. Not only is it gimmicky and hilarious, it also results in traversal being much more interesting in this game. Obviously Breath of the Wild had its moments with like DIY stuff, like shield surfing and stuff like that, but the options are endless in Tears of the Kingdom. Plus, horses aren't completely obsolete, so have no fear for horse lovers. <laughs> you can make horse-drawn carriages, shit like that. My favorite was making a little wooden hoverboard, putting a little uh, fan under it, and then attaching it to a horse. Uh, the Skelly Mobile, it was just fun, it was fun, it was fun stuff. Of course, Ultra Hand isn't limited to just mobility. Definitely works the best ones for mobility, but you can make structures and stuff too. Uh, yeah, you can get into your Minecraft bag a little bit, or your Fortnite bag a little bit. My personal favorite is making a fully automated trebuchet. And it does damage, so, you know. Uh, let me just say the possibilities are endless. I could go on and on about the different things you can do in Choose the Kingdom uh, with Ultra Hand, but let me just leave it at this. It is 100% possible, tested by the way, to crank 90s in Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I didn't think that was a sentence I'd be saying, I don't think that's a sentence anyone thought anyone would be saying, but it's been said and it is true. I would show a clip if I wasn't afraid of Nintendo speaking to my house in the middle of the night and suffocating me with my pillow. Anyways, the second best part of Tears and gameplay aspect is definitely Fuse. Not only is it a smart way to circumvent the degradation function for early game weapons, which with like low durability and damage, but it has its own fair share of like funny shit going on. Uh, just before going into that, I will say they have added an NPC to repair any weapons you have for a flat cost. So you don't have to worry too much about your favorite weapons breaking as long as you're careful. You know, no more holding on to your favorite weapon because you're afraid of it breaking. You can use that shit to hell and back as long as that one durability and doesn't break. Bring it back, get it fixed. Everyone's happy. Uh, all in all, you know, I think Nintendo did the best possible job of, you know, fixing the weapon degradation mechanic without fully removing it. And, you know, honestly, even in the late game, I prefer using those stupid Frankenstein-esque fused abomination weapons over, like, generic questline strong late game long swords. It may not be Biss, but walking into a fight with the fucked up version of Spinner's Sword from My Hero Academia, much more fun than a boring-ass greatsword. 
essentially fuse chads on top, standard cells, open seam. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, the fucked up weapons aren't going to just you, as you know from the video game, of uh, the gameplay video. Sorry, the video game gameplay video. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I love this game. I'm sorry. I'm just really excited to talk about it. I can't get the words out properly. Oh. Calm down, Skelly Brown. Calm down. That rhymed. Anyways. The fucked up weapons aren't limited to just you, as you know from the demonstration video. Uh, constructs can spawn or make their own. I don't know how it's done behind the scenes, but they will get fused weapons. Um, <laughs> and it's funny as fuck, you know. One health, you're running away. From a boss you just did need to find some help and out of the shadows emerges a tiny little construct grunt with like an eight foot tall <laughs> pole with various weapons sticking out of it like christmas tree branches it's fucking ridiculous uh speaking of the construct actually i was really pleasantly surprised to find out that they aren't like just a grunt race uh obviously there are grunts that are just common enemies but there are higher forms that kind of function like their own tribe uh think like legion from mass effect off the top of my head it's a good reference point not the same you know bar for bar but it gives a good idea of the how the constructs function you know i think in general the sky islands and constructs are one of the biggest tiles of the game i mean i'm gonna be saying that a lot because there are a lot of highlights of this game but it needs to be said they're amazing it's clear that nintendo put a lot of work into layout and topography of each sky island and even among the sky islands there is a lot of variation uh, they're not all like the golden trees waterfall rocks whatever some are more, you know, destroyed over time through weather. Some are snowy, if they're higher up. Some are modernized, you know, there's like a steampunk one I encountered. It's interesting, and it's really, you know, it makes for fun gameplay, fun exploration. Uh, so yeah, love the fucking silence, love the constructs, they're beautifully designed, laid out perfectly. Uh, there are also a fair bit of Sky Island exclusive bosses, like, you may, not have, you may have seen during the gameplay video, the dragon. Uh, yeah, that's a boss you can fight, you need to be on a Sky Island to f access the fight but yeah it's cool cool bosses bosses in this game are pretty solid nothing crazy except for the final one which i'll talk about later but they do their job and they function great anyways uh the sky islands are amazing but it does come with a small drawback of the ground areas not being as precisely designed and tight like the old ones in breath of the wild uh, just like off the top of my head in breath of the wild you wouldn't really run to an area where you're like oh it's too empty or this is too overfilled or anything like that. You occasionally, not occasionally, that's too frequent, but you will run across at least one of these in Tears of the Kingdom, which, you know, it does suck, but, you know, because of the revamp traversal mechanics and shit like that, you won't notice it. You'll be too busy flying at fucking 80 miles per hour. I use kilometers, why do I use miles? Who gives a shit? <laughs> You'll be flying at 90 kilometers an hour on a fucking hovercraft. You won't notice that shit. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's going to the ground area of the game. That's one of the, I've you know, said this multiple times, but one of the highlights of the games. They see how the world and characters have changed since Breath of the Wild. As you know, time has passed, uh, but that's not limited to, you know, the topography of the lands. The characters have changed, the tribes have changed, and seeing how they develop is one of the best parts of the game. You know, you get to catch up with fan favorite characters. Sidon, Cass, Yunobo. You don't like Yunobo. Right? Like him? He's not a lame wine bitch. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> It's a treat, you know, to see how they change, although not with a fair share of, you know, sadder updates. One of the larger themes of Truth the Kingdom, spoiler alert, by the way, if you didn't see it on the screen for some reason, uh, it's grief and loss, you know, it's in the name, Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I don't want to, you know, be a Debbie Downer or anything. It sounds depressing at face value, but the idea of the game isn't like, oh, doom and gloom, the world is fucked, everything's over, I hate my life. The idea is overcoming grief and loss, you know, whether it's by yourself or as a community, it's, you know, it's a great message, and it really plays well into the storylines. Uh, example, spoiler alert, again, another one on screen, boom, boom, boom. One of the best side quests in the game, one of my favorite side quests ever, honestly, ever playing it, is the Tiba side quest. You may remember Tiba, the sexy bird man who helps you in Breath of the Wild. Here he's on the screen, you know, white feathers, cool outfit, sexy face, handsome, you know, looks like he'd be romantic. He knows how to take care of you, he knows how to, how to treat you right. Sorry, 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 I got a bit lost in fantasy there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in between games, Tiba's wife and son die. <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't be giggling. Saki and Tulin, yeah, the, they die. Yeah, it's really sad. And, you know, depending on how early you access the quest, it's completely out of left field. 
I accessed it really early, so you know, I was expecting a fun little, how's Tiba doing? How's leaving Doritos? And he opens up with, yeah, my wife died. So my kid. Oh, 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 okay. Well, fuck me then, I guess. <laughs> but, as I said before, themes of the game is overcoming grief, overcoming loss, and it is one of the best storylines ever. Um, with the help of the best character in the Zelda franchise, Sidon, yes, Sidon, the Giga Chad, himself, boom, on screen, Sidon. <laughs> uh, with the work of Sidon, you know, we explore Tiba's trauma, how to deal with his loss, and the quest culminates in Sidon and Tiba falling in love. I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but it's a, it's, an, it's a great pair. Their chemistry is really good. Uh, the writers, the writers know what they're doing. Man. I rarely say this about any media, but it actually made me like, you know, shed a little tear. And the last time I did that was when I watched like Fox and the Ham when I was t- ten. <laughs> and yes, that would be satisfying. Anyways, the story and the characters and tears are another big, pearly, strong suit. We should believe tears is better than Breath of the Wild. In terms of the new characters, uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but. Prepared for a logical model to the older games, specifically pointing at my favorite Zelda games, Majora's Mask and Wind Waker. Don't want to say any more and ruin the surprise, so I'll just leave it at that. Thinking of T-Ben and Sidon getting together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Spoiler alert, the main plot of the game is uniting all the tribes. Yes, to fight off one bigger evil. And what is this bigger evil? Ganondorf. Yes, the villain is Ganondorf. Uh, let me just add real quick, A, his design fucks, it's awesome. One of the best villain designs I've seen in a minute. And B, it is great to see that ginger fucking elite villain role again. Ganondorf is one of the greatest Nintendo villains, and I feel like he never really got his fair share of respect. I mean, I stand by the fact that Wind Waker Ganondorf is one of the best video game villains of all time, design-wise, motivation-wise, everything-wise. I know he's not bad chesting over Ganondorf. I love that ginger cunt. <laughs> Each of the tribes unlocks a different traverse mechanic, you know, fan, engine, wheels, whatever. Don't want to spoil too much, but you get the gist. But seeing members of different tribes like interact is some really fun interactions, so that's really nice to see. Um, and yeah, this is one of the funniest, heartwarming, and motivational storylines in the game that starts off with a shit ton of grief. It's just fantastic. Add to all of that a revamped dynamic soundtrack that keeps the same spirit of Breath of the Wild while introducing slappers to the Sky Islands. And I'm not exaggerating, they fucking slap. I know the the tone of the original Breath of the Wild is, you know, a bit more relaxed, a bit more atmospheric, but yeah, they got some bang in here, I'll say that much. But yeah, after that, it's an amazing soundtrack, and you get a game that is in almost every facet better than the original, and I'm serious, in almost every facet. All in all, Tears of the Kingdom is a quintessential sequel, a worthy follow-up in every imaginable way, story, characters, music, gameplay, you name it, all while paying respects to what made Breath of the Wild so breathtaking in the first place. It's one of those sequels that are so fucking amazing that no matter how good the original is, revisiting it will still feel like a chore. I hope this video is able to convey just how amazing I think Tears of the Kingdom is, and reassure any anxious fans that when it releases, they will be treated to one of the greatest sequels in gaming history. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, normally I don't make scripted videos, but this is like a one in a trillion chance, so I just had to. Uh, usually I'm streaming on Twitch at Skelly Brown, so feel free to follow that as well. And with that, uh, that's my piece. Thanks for watching, and see you on stream later. Goodbye. Okay, that's a wrap. Sorry. Some slip ups here and there. I can just cut those out. Not a big deal. Dude, who is blowing at my phone right now? Twitter. Who the fuck is DMing on Twitter? The Nintendo of America just. Message me on Twitter. Pardon? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I mean, I gotta check it out, right? I just... And that's a picture of my house in my DMs.